Well, we call it the Asperitas cloud. But I mean, who's to say what the right pronunciation of Latin is? I mean, unless you know any ancient Romans to uh, to tell you, we're all guessing how to pronounce it. Can you tell me about the history here of uh, this cloud type and how it came to be? Well, we first noticed this cloud being sent in from Iowa in the US. Cedar Rapids actually was the location. And it was a sky of strange waves, like turbulent undulations in the sky. And at the time, I remember thinking, that's like a wavy cloud. There are names, there are terms, classifications for wavy clouds. But this seemed more turbulent, more chaotic. And then every six months or a year, another one would come in from a member somewhere around the world. They came in from Australia, from Greenland, from across Europe. And then eventually I proposed maybe we need a new type of cloud, a new classification of cloud. Who did you go to to get this done? Well, that's the question. Where do, how do you go about getting a new cloud classified? Uh, I wasn't quite sure. So I went to, here in the UK, I went to the Royal Meteorological Society and I asked them, I said, you know, I've got a new type of cloud. And they said, yeah, right, you do. Let's have a look at your, <laughs> let's have a look at your cloud. And I brought in some photographs uh, sent in by members from around the world. Uh, I called up my cousin, Philip, who was a uh, Latin teacher at high school. And I said, Philip, you know, I need some Latin. Um, what what would the Romans have used to describe the sea when it is turbulent? What are terms that I could use for this new type of cloud that I'm proposing? And Philip said, glacialis hiemps aquilonibus aspirat andas. Uh, because he was giving me a quotation from a Roman poet and it has its Virgil and it says the waves were roughened by the icy winter's northern gales and there's a verb in there, aspiro. He said, do something with that word because it's when the sea was roughened. It's the, it's the verb for that. So the asperitas clad, the name came out of that. It means roughness. It's the noun associated with that same route it means roughness and um yeah the w uh, sorry the uh, royal meteorological society said yeah you should um, maybe take this forward there's got a good case for it you need to speak to the world meteorological organization if you want this to become official so that's who i went to next can you tell me what you guys do a little bit about the organization so we are an organization uh, with members across 120 countries around the world. We've had about 59,000 people join the society over the years. And uh, most of the growth actually is in the US at the moment. Um, it's a society of anyone who, like me, feels the sky is the most evocative and dynamic and maybe poetic part of nature um, and that maybe the sky gets a bad rap you know we don't really appreciate it as much as some other parts of nature because it's always there anything that is in your vision the whole time you become blind to and I think that's the case often for many people with the sky we'll remember a sunset a dramatic sunset or a dramatic sunrise but throughout the day, the ever-changing clouds, the, uh, the abstract art of nature that's constantly um, taking place above us, even though it fills up 50% of our vision, is so easily missed uh, because we know it's always there. You know, we just evolved to pay attention to what's happening down here on the ground. I guess that's where the important things for us have happened. And we forget the fact that we live in the sky not beneath it we inhabit this ocean of air which is our atmosphere we just happen to live on the uh the sea bed the ocean bed um and we forget the fact that the sky is um the clouds are like the ever-changing expressions on the face of the atmosphere they can reveal the moods of the atmosphere and you know as a meteorologist you well know how they can uh, reveal the changes of weather in store in a very very short term localized sense and we're forgetting how to read those um, those messages often in the sky. But more importantly today, the sky is also an ever-present resource to nature that 
um, is always within easy reach. You can live in the most urban environment in uh, uh, you know one of the world's most urban environments, and the sky is the last wilderness within easy reach for you. So, uh, you know, at the Card Appreciation Society, we just uh, like a tap on the shoulder to remind people the sky is there above you. It seems crazy that you'd need it, but the sky is there above you and you should take a moment during your day to day to have your head in the clouds because it's good for your mind, it's good for your creativity, good for your health, good for your soul. Do you have a favorite kind of cloud? The Asperitas. <laughs> <laughs> It's got to be. Well, I mean, that's uh, I have a number of clouds. Yeah, turn your back on it now. <laughs> um, I mean, I've got a number of. I, I do like a lenticularis cloud, which I'm sure you'll know, Emily, is a, uh, looks like a, a UFO or a flying source. The cloud forms in the vicinity of mountains or hills downwind of those um, that have raised ground one of these lenticularis clouds can form when the air is when the weather is stable the atmosphere is stable then air flows coming over those mountains can take on rising and dipping paths and you get this invisible standing wave of air where it flows up and down uh, in a wave-like shape and this cloud can form at the crest of this invisible uh, wave of air and they can look remarkably remarkably like um flying saucers sometimes hovering they hover in place even though there's a stiff wind they stay in place in the air um and they're like a reminder they're vehicles of the imagination really and a reminder that um clouds can take you anywhere 